Hello everybody. Uh, hope you guys are studying hard for the exam. Uh, so today's question is from other payables and other receivables. And uh, this I found from the IGCSE exam past papers. And um, the question basically uh, expects you to make two T accounts. One is uh, on commission receivable, that is an income account. And the other is the rates and insurance account. So here they're saying, Sara's financial year ends on 31st July. So you guys should know that the, the year under consideration is starting from 1st August and ends on 31st July. So that's our financial year, Sara's financial year in this question. And uh, they are basically considering 1st August 2017 to 31st July 2018. And then they are saying, Hana pays Sara a commission on goods purchased from Sara's, uh, from her by Sara's customers. The commission is paid six monthly in arrears and she is paying commission to Sara. Uh, so Sara is basically receiving money in this case. So it's an income for Sara. And then Sara provided the following information. Uh, there is commission outstanding at start 190. And then there is on August 3, we have received a check uh, for commission outstanding at start and then on February 1 we have received another check for um, commission that is $200 and then commission outstanding at end is $220. We all know this that for the commission receivable account also they are saying complete the commission receivable account for the year ended 31st July 2018 balance the account and bring down the balance on 1st August 2018. So we all know the rule for uh, I usually teach this in my other videos as well and there's one of my one of the videos for the basics of uh, accruals and prepayments uh, the other name for this chapter is accruals and prepayments there's one name it's called other payables and other receivables uh, when you're making an income account you basically apply the rule OPPO so owing brought down comes on the debit side prepaid brought down comes on the credit side prepaid carried down comes on the debit side owing carried down comes on the uh, credit side so they are saying there's a starting balance that is that is balance brought down on the debit side it's an owing brought down uh, so and they're they've received two checks uh, during the year so one is on August 3 so where, how will I record this check so when when I'm receiving a check you guys should know that bank will be debited in my bank account in my cash book I will show this on the debit side and I'll and write commission receivable in the bank account so for this account, I need to record this on the credit side. I write here August 3, I write here bank, and I write here 190. And another check I'm getting on February uh, 1, uh, so February 1, 2018. So I'll write here February 1, 2018, and I'll write here bank again, and this will be 200. Then they are saying, on 31st July 2018 commission is again outstanding because this is the last date I know that this is my carried down of this account balance carried down if there is a balance brought down on the debit side that was an owing brought down we all know that owing carried down comes on the credit side I'll write here balance carried down I'll write here 220 and this will be July 31 2018 and whenever, wherever you're placing the bank, so because bank is being debited, uh, commission receivable account is being credited, wherever bank is, income statement is always on the opposite side. So when you're transferring this to the income statement, think about it like this. Income statement itself, uh, this account is basically uh, the amount of income that you're receiving during the year. That is the amount of income that you have actually earned. That is how much service that you have given that is the income statement value right so uh, if you uh, this income statement value against this income statement is credited and this account is debited so whenever income statement is credited profit increases so uh, you will write income statement on the debit side of this account and this will come out to be 420 so i'll add the credit side 190 200 220 and then I'll subtract 190. So I will get 420 for this income statement value. And this will be the last date of the year, 31st July 2018. And this account will balance at 190 plus uh, 420 will be 610. And this balance carried down, of course, will become my balance brought down.
220 this will be 1st august 2018 okay in the next part they are saying sara maintains one combined account for rates and insurance this both of these are our expenses they are saying on 1st august 2017 two months rates 800 were outstanding uh, so 800 is for two months so 400 is for one month and then three months insurance 570 was prepaid so they've given you opening balances so we all know that the the rule for um, expense account is p o o p so balance brought down obviously insurance balance brought down is going to come on the debit side that is a prepaid brought down uh, that means last year we had paid uh, insurance for three months of this year that means august september and october is already paid for insurance however for rates last year we had incurred an expense but uh, two months rates we did not pay so last year's that is june and july of uh, last year that is 2017 june and july 2017 we have incurred the expense we have used the service but we did not pay for the uh, last year's two months rate uh, two months rates uh, then they are saying during the year ended 31st July 2018 the following payments were made by check because they were made by check bank is credited this account needs to be debited I need to record these uh, payments exactly I'll write here September 1 2017 I will write here bank and I'll write here 5200 and I need to write here in the bracket this is for rates and then I will record the other payment that I've made, November 1, uh, 2017. I'll write here bank and I'll write here insurance in the bracket and I'll write here 3400. Uh, then they are saying on 31st July 2018, it was found that 1000 of the insurance paid on 1st November 2017 related to Sarah's private house. Whenever Sarah is spending for, his, for her private house, uh, this is going to be drawings. But during the year when we paid for this insurance at that time, we did not know that she's paying for uh, her private house from the business, uh, from the business money. But on, th on 31st July, uh, they realized that okay 1000 related to her private house so uh, this go this should be transferred to the drawings account so since uh, on the debit side we've written 3400 right so of this 1000 is for drawings and that will go in the drawings account so i'll write here 31st july on the credit side so basically drawings will be debited and rates and insurance account will be credited and this will be recorded as drawings in the drawings account so i'll write here 31st july 2018 i'll write here drawings and this is basically from insurance so i'll write i in the bracket and i'll write here 1000 so 1000 has now gone to the uh, drawings account and then they are saying okay for rates and for insurance i need to calculate my carry downs but I already know that two months rates were owing. So that was June and July, 400 each. And the payment that I'm making here is for 13 months to 30th June, 2018. My year is ending on 31st July, 2018. And uh, the first payment that I'm making, the basically the payment that I'm making for rates is for 13 months and it's total 5,200. Uh, so 13 months, what are those 13 months? So it's June, July of last year, uh, then 11 months for this year. So June, July of last year, and then from August to June of this year. So we are paying till here. So August 2017 to June 2018. So there's one month that we, have, we haven't paid because our year is ending on 31st July 2018. So one month we haven't paid. So if we, if we calculate this one divided by 13 into 5200, we already knew as well that 400 was one month, um, one month rates. 400 was rates for one month. So here when I do one divided by 13 multiplied by 5200, I will get here 400. Okay, so this 400 is my owing at end because I haven't paid for one month of this year. That is July 2018. So that is my owing at end. So what I'll do here is I will 
uh, simply record this as my balance carried down. So if balance brought down for owing brought down is going to come on the credit side. So owing carried down is going to come on the debit side. I'll write here balance carried down. I'll write rates in the bracket and I'll write here 400. So this will be on 31st July 2018. I haven't paid one month, one month rates. Uh, okay, for now for insurance, I need to find out whether it's an owing or prepaid at end. So I'll look at the details here. They're saying insurance for 12 months to 31st October 2018 which means 31st October 2018 lies outside my current financial year. So my current financial year is uh, from August to 31st July 2018. So August 2017 to 31st July 2018. And I already know that three months of um, this year, August, September and October 2017 were already prepaid. And the amount for this was 570. So now the next amount that I have paid is for again for 12 months and it's for uh, it's for from uh, November. So it relates to uh, it relates to November. Uh, so basically November to um, October of next year. So November 2017 to October 2018. So basically there are these three months which lie outside my current financial year. My current financial year basically ends here July 2018. These three months lie outside my financial year. So what I have paid is 3400 is the total that I have paid. 1000 I need to subtract because that was Sarah's private uh, private house insurance. So when I subtract this, I get 2400 So I need to find out, okay, three months is what I have paid extra. And total I have paid 2400 for 12 months. So I'll write here 3 divided by 12 multiplied by 2400. I will get 600 that I that is what I have paid extra so this is my balance carried down in this account and also prepaid carried down basically my prepaid carried down will come here balance carried down and in the brackets I'll write insurance so I write I for insurance I write here 31st July 2018 and this will be 600 that is what I have paid for three months of next year and then now I need to calculate my income statement value so income statement for firstly for rates, I write here rates in the bracket. I will highlight what is important for rates. So this is the value that I count towards rates. This is the value that I count towards rates. So 5200 plus 400 is 5600 minus 800. This is again the value that I will count towards rates. So minus 800 will give me a value of 4800 for rates that will go in the income statement uh, for insurance again I'll use another color uh, so insurance I will take this 570 as a value towards insurance then uh, I'll add 3400 then I'm gonna subtract uh, 1000 from this and 600 from this so 570 plus 3400 minus 1000 minus 600 will give me 2370 for insurance. So this is income statement value for insurance. I write here income statement. So if I need to write this together for rates and insurance, I'll write 4800 plus 2370 in the income statement. Uh, but individually rates for income statement for rates is 4800. Income statement for insurance is 2370. And then now I need to balance this account so I will total this account. So the total of this account will be 9570 on both sides. Balance carried down will become my balance brought down. So this will be prepaid brought down for insurance. I'll write I in the bracket. I'll write 600. I'll write here 1st August 2018. And then I will write 1st August 2018 again. I'll write here balance brought down. I'll write here rates. This is my owing brought down for, rate, for, for rates. And I'll write here 400. So basically I have actually copied this over here. 
and copied this over here so wherever you have balance carried down the balance brought down will come on the opposite side uh, so that's it for this video hope you guys find this helpful thank you so much for watching